probably do justice to the topic and define what the heck is an AI agent? It's been thrown around, Ted. Like, if we had to take shots, we'd all be so drunk on agents, right? <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe, um, Alex, why don't you give us a shot? What is an agent? So the way that we think about agents is uh, in the same way that we have now self-driving cars, uh, especially in San Francisco. You can think of an AI agent like a self-driving program in that you give it a high-level directive and it autonomously figures out how to arrive at the objective on its own. So sometimes that involves using tools, writing code, uh, speaking to other agents or speaking to humans, and it autonomously solves the problem. Now, what that looks like tangibly is when you combine large language models with tool calling. So generally speaking, LLMs can only chat, right? They give you text responses. But when you give it the ability to actuate with the world, change the world's state in some way, it becomes agentic. And in the same way that humans are intelligent creatures because we can use tools, agents are intelligent programs because they can use tools. And the way that it divides itself in the market, you have four categories. You have the AI co-pilots, so think of chat with your data. You have customer bots or support bots, chat bots. So these are able to navigate conversations on their own. We have AI software engineers, which can write programs on their own. And then the fully autonomous agents, where these are a lot more exploratory, but you give them a high level objective. And they just figure out how to solve problems on their own, usually domain specific, but there's a lot of different categories. We're happy to dive into that. So we are building a consumer product uh, or a service that you can delegate tasks to so that can complete that task on your behalf end to end and eventually freeze your time to focus on other things. I know many people in the audience had to travel to be here. So imagine if you talk to our agent and it plans your trip, it books your flights, books your hotels, tells you when to get to the TED talk that you want to attend and takes care of all of that for you. So you can just enjoy the trip, enjoy the event, connect with other people. Uh, Noam, I think you tweeted out that you're growing a team, is that right, that's focused on agents? So uh, we started a multi-agent team at, uh, at OpenAI, and I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, I worked on multi-agent for a long time, so my work on, on poker back when I was a PhD student was viewed through a multi-agent lens. I later worked on AI for the board game Diplomacy, which is a cooperative competitive game that also took a very multi-agent approach to it. And a lot of my background was in game theory, which of course is about multiple agents interacting with each other. Um, and you know, after Diplomacy, I honestly became, um, I became a bit disillusioned with the multi-agent field. And I, uh, that's part of my motivation for Moving away from that, I moved to OpenAI and I, I started working on um, more general reasoning instead of multi-agent reasoning. And I, I think in many ways, the field of multi-agent was ahead of its time and, and just like there needed to be more of a foundation laid. Um, but you know, recently there's been a lot of progress in AI and I, I basically I, I gained a renewed faith that there was a real opportunity for multi-agents as a field to come back. Um, and so we're, I'm, I'm really excited to chart a new path and, and try something different. I think we're going to take a very different approach to what's been tried before. Um, but yeah, I think there's, there's a lot to be done, both on the cooperative and competitive side of having multiple agents interacting with each other. I feel that the most important problem right now uh, with agents is the interaction between the user and the agent especially when you're not targeting technical people who are used to set up systems or to use no-code uh, no systems. Um, we need to understand that there is a human behind who is using it, so we need to make sure that we are building agents to make them save time and that using the agent with like a first principle approach, using the agent is faster than doing the task by themselves. And for example, um, there is something that we are kind of a little bit against, uh, especially at Flood, is the chat-based approach. All the tools you can see on the market are usually chat-based. This is kind of the easy way of building at least like the interaction between the user and the agent, where you ask the assistant to do something, and then you correct, and then you try to understand how I can explain this like a little bit clearer, and how I can you know, improve the prompt, etc. All of this processing is taking like way much time that just doing the task by yourself with like traditional tools. So we feel that 
at least we should focus on the anticipation from the assistant as much as we can and focusing on the chat based, especially just to give feedback and to have like a retraction, a loop back in the system, than to base anything, uh, everything uh, on the chat.